engage in environmental activities and or projects that are related to the key focal areas. Now we speak with community liaison officers Leslie Ann Dillon and Ronaco Osborne. They join us to show how eligible groups can apply, the application process and accountability systems in place to act as oversight. It's time to go in depth with the Green Fund. Welcome, Leslie Ann and Ronaco. Thank you so much for joining us. And no, it seems as though I would have left out the executing unit. So, Ronaco, with that in mind, what is the Green Fund all about? Okay. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. So, the Green Fund is Trinidad and Tobago's flagship national environmental fund through its delivery mechanism, which is the Green Fund Executing Unit. It is inextricably linked to the national's goal for sustainable de development. And the purpose of the fund is to financially assist organizations and civil society organizations who wish to engage in activities related to the four focal areas of the Green Fund, that is remediation, reforestation, environmental education, and public awareness on environmental issues, as stated in the Miscellaneous Taxes Act. <clears throat> So the fund was first established under the Finance Act of the year 2000 under the Miscellaneous Taxes Act, Part 14, and it is a tax called the Green Fund Levy. And that is a tax that is taken on a quarterly basis. And it has been through a number of amendments from 2004, the Amendment to Act No. 5, Act No. 13 in 2010, and Act No. 2 in 2012. So that, in a nutshell, is what is the Green Fund. And, all right, so let me bring Leslie Ann into the conversation. Now, we just heard about the levy, we just heard about taxes. Can you expand on that a little bit, please, Leslie? Leslie Ann? Hi, good evening, everyone. The Green Fund monies um, that are dispersed to eligible organizations to engage in environmental activities is actually capitalized by a Green Fund levy, which is a 0.3% levy or tax on the gross sales and receipts of all businesses operating in Trinidad and Tobago. Prior to 2016, the Green Fund levy stood at 0.1% of the gross sales and receipts, and that was increased as at January 1st, 2016. And at present, the Green Fund, the monies in the Green Fund itself to be dispersed to eligible organizations stand at approximately 7.6 billion TT dollars, and this is inclusive of the drawdowns on this fund. And these funds are what uh, we use to fund environmental projects related to our four focal areas. All right, so you, you just quoted some, some big dollars and cents now. So with that yes. in mind, though, Ronako, <laughs> who are the people who can access this sort of funding? What was what, what the criteria for being able to say, okay, well, I get in some resources from the Green Fund? Okay, so there are currently four entities that can access the Green Fund. The first is an organization incorporated under an act other than the Companies Act. That's why, for example, the EMA was able to access the Green Fund because they fall under the Environmental Management Act. And that's why, for example, the IMA was able to access the Green Fund because they fall under the Institute of Marine Affairs Act. The second entity would be an organization incorporated under Section 305 of the Companies Act as a non-profit company. And then the, and the next organization would be the NGOs, that is an unincorporated body that is duly registered with the ministry with responsibility for community development as an NGO. And then we have the community-based organization, which is an unincorporated body from a particular locality, which is registered with the ministry for or responsible with community development. Now, the applications must be related to one or more of the focal areas of the Green Fund. And as I said before, remediation, reforestation, environmental education, and public awareness on environmental issues, and conservation of the environment. So, Ronako and Leslie, and I feel like I want to be a new best friend. But with that in mind, in terms of like to see how it is we could do this, a win-win situation. But with regard to being a liaison officer, what are some of the things that that entail? And I'll ask you, please, Leslie, in terms of like a community 
liaison officer. Yes, um, as um, one of the two community liaison officers actually assigned for the entire Trinidad and Tobago, and Aqua and I are charged with a number of responsibilities and duties. Um, the first being we assist the program coordinator of the Green Fund Executing Unit. We also plan and execute outreach activities to educate um, population, the population, sorry, and eligible organizations, potential eligible organizations on the Green Fund. We organize meetings and site visits with said potential um, successful applicants. Um, we also provide technical guidance to identify eligible activities which can um, proceed to have green fund funding. And we also provide support in the application process to these um, applicants to complete the application itself. We collaborate with the ministry's communication unit on formulating press releases and other um, communication for disbursement and so and these this communication and press releases whatever information we formulate must be in line with the ministry's strategic plan and when all of this is said and done the community liaison officers work um, together to evaluate the said outreach activities to see how successful it was to, to, to gauge the reach of the Green Fund Executing Unit. And that, remind, and that reminds me of a question that I want to get into at a little later date in terms of okay. how is it that you hold bodies, organizations accountable to make sure that, the, that resources are sent where they're supposed to be, send, to be sending. Mm -hmm. But we'll ask that in a bit. But Renako, take yeah. me through the process, please. Uh, I have a good idea. Is it that I, I, and I formed a body what is the process of engaging with the Green Fund, successfully applying to be able to use resources towards this good for Trinidad and Tobago? Okay, so as Leslie stated, the community liaison officers, we review every single application that comes to the Green Fund. But we don't just give the application to the organization and let them fill it out by themselves. We create a relationship with them and work with them to fill out the application form. The only thing we can do is fill it out for them of course. So we work with them, and once the application is suitable, then we send it forward to the Green Fund Advisory Committee, because they are the body that has the jurisdiction as it relates to the certification and or denial of all projects that come to the Green Fund. So to make it clear, the executing unit and the committee liaison officers, we don't have any power as it relates to the certification or denial of any application form. That falls squarely on the shoulders of the GFAC and the incumbent minister for um, responsibility for the environment. So once all of the attaching documents are submitted, and that is stated in the last part of the application form, some of those documents may be the project proposal, the methodology, a detailed technical budget with the tree codes, since we are aligned to the government's tree code system, the um, let's say for the organization, their bylaws, the organization structure, and that's just to name a few, because the list is quite comprehensive. And once all of the attaching documents are, let's say, ready, we send it forward to the GFAC. They make their review and their recommendation to the minister based on their own internal selection criteria. And then once the minister is satisfied, then a MOA is done up between the ministry and the organization. And then the Ministry of Finance comes into play. Now, in the MOA, the organization will determine what will be the disbursement schedule because the Green Fund doesn't give, let's say, 100% of the funding to the groups. There are, there's a number of criteria that the group has to submit in terms of documents and reports before they get a second tranche. But to ensure that the project runs seamlessly, the disbursement schedule is determined before signing the MOE. And then the project starts with the project implementation side of the unit. And I want to talk about that Im implementation in just a bit. But before that, we take the break. When we come back from the grid, Leslie and I want to get into accountability systems. But we are diving deep into the Green Fund. Stay with us. generations hard work and good advice.
advice have been essential. So when hard work gives me tough pain, I rely on Panadol Ultra that relieves fast five types of tough pain. Take good advice. Take Panadol Ultra. Find your trusted Panadol Extra Strength with a new look and new tablet. TheBestToys.com when it comes to bikes, scooters, ride-ons, we have the most affordable to the best brands. We have terrain and mountain bikes for the adults, those who want to go off-road, Kent, Movello, Huffy. We also have bikes for kiddies and scooters for kiddies as well. Themed scooters and bikes, Spider-Man, Paw Patrol, Princess Pony. We also have ride-ons, motorized ride-ons, so those kids can drive themselves. Or you as the parent can control them with the remote control. All this and so much more, the best bikes, scooters, ride-ons. For the best prices at TheBestToys.com. Now available in store or shop online at thebesttoys.com. Call or WhatsApp 312 Toys. That's 312 8697. Nationwide delivery available. Cash or links on delivery. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carrie Roberts and this is me in 60 seconds. Now some of you may know I have a 16 year background as a chef and counting, so I absolutely love food, I absolutely love cooking. But more recently, I've gained a background of three years in media and I absolutely love that too. Now I have a background in so many other things, I've done martial arts, I've done modeling, I've also done things with woodworking and things getting my hands dirty including DIY and there's so much more that I would love to do. What I also have a passion for is helping others and that is something I try to inculcate in my life every single single day and I try my very best to just put my best foot forward in everything that I do and that's me in 60 seconds Welcome back to In-Depth, I'm DK Roster. We are speaking with community liaison officers Ronaco Osborne and Leslie and Dylan. Leslie and I nearly forget your surname, you know. But with that in mind, though, Leslie, and talk to me about some of the accountability systems that are in place for people who are trying to access resources from the Green Fund, please. Um, DK, there are many, many um, accountability systems in place. One of the major and the first accounting system we have in place is that of the MOA, the Memorandum of Agreement, which is signed between the minister, between sorry, the government by way of the Ministry of Finance and um, the Ministry of Planning and Development in this instance, and the successful applicant. Um, and their obligations are outlined. All parties' obligations are outlined in this MOA. Um, secondly, once the MOA has been signed by the parties um, from within the Green Fund Executing Unit, a project support officer. Mm -hmm as well as an accounting officer is assigned to the um, successful organization applicant um, and they go through the entire project um, cycle with the applicant. So they're there to monitor and keep checks and balances. We also have a recording system where all records um, must be held clearly and separately um, for all green fund funded initiatives by the organization. So the organizations must have clear records. Any information which the ministry or the government or the green fund executing unit wishes to have, they will indicate beforehand to the organization, giving them time um, to submit the relevant information needed, as well as any reports. Um, and these reports um, include technical reports as well as financial reports. And for the accounting purpose, the Green Fund Executing Unit, um, there's a template by which the organizations have to submit their accounting records. And these, this template is also mandated and upheld by the Ministry of Finance. Now, the technical activity, technical reports include the activities, the technical activities of the organization, and the financial reports will include the financial expenditure of the green fund monies and these reports are submitted quarterly as well as yearly and in order to have further disbursements these re reports must be completed and submitted 
And in terms of implementation, we also have the project support officers working with the organizations, not in the not monitoring the administrative aspect of it, but however, they look at the implementation of the activities. So they are guided by that and they look at these activities to ensure that they are being done correctly and, and also to ensure that the goals and objectives of the initiative are met. However, it must be noted that if there's any issue with the projects and it is of concern to the units or to the ministry, um, there is the option of not recommending a project for further disbursement until the issue has been resolved, or as outlined in the MOA, we also have the option of terminating the initiative and indicating in writing to the applicant um, of the potential um, termination of the initiative. So we see that there are a lot of um, checks and balances in place to ensure that the monies, the green fund monies, are spent and accounted for. All right, thank you so much for that, Leslian. And Ronaco Leslian mentioned two things. One, the term successful applicants. And then also, Leslian spoke to being able to say, okay, well, this project is not going the way that it's supposed to. You, a little earlier, Ronaco spoke about the fact that you would have a level of not necessarily hand holding, but building capacity so that people can apply successfully. What are some of the things that in that application process and engaging to try to access green fund resources that some people almost get and need to just tweak a little bit. So what are some of those things? Because I'm sure people would be wanting to access and it's a win-win situation to have these projects going on because they're going on for the betterment of Trinidad and Tobago. So in your experience, what are some of those things that people just need to tweak or change a little bit, move forward to successfully access the fund? Okay, so in my experience, one of the areas or one of the main areas where most groups fall short would be in the activity section of the application form, where they have to look at the methodology. Because when we look at the activity section, it is not as simple as you telling us what you're going to do. It's also the how, that is the methodology. So that is one of the sections where most groups need, let's say, a little more assistance or consultation from us to set them in the right direction. The other area is the stakeholder alignment, because through the years of experience that Lezen and I have, that we have had, we have developed a sort of a sense of the sort of stakeholders each project will have to engage, like the regional corporations, for example, or if it's schools, the Ministry of Education, the education officer, depending on the project. So stakeholder alignment is one of the other sections that groups need a little assistance and, and let's say help in, and then plus the technical budget. Because as I mentioned earlier, we are aligned to the tree code system. So some of the applicants, you know, we have to always, let's say, review the budget and ensure that the three codes are there and if the three codes aren't there we you know have a discussion with them to find out well why this is not so and even if and if they're having problems we can even let's say suggest certain organizations that may have the information because remember we don't want um to have let's say any talk or any notion that we Sending them to certain organizations or we send them to go this bio or that bio. We put them into the relevant, let's say, authorities or bodies that may have that information. For example, the Central Tenders Board is one body that I have sent groups to in the past. So it's those three areas that have the, let's say, major points that groups have to work on when they come to us. And we work with them to fill it out. All right, so we have about one and a half minutes more. It's one thing to say, okay, well, we've had these successful people apply for the funding. It's another to know who some of them are. So, Leslie, and you have final words asking you to give us contact information for the Green Fund and also who are some of those success stories from uh, interacting with the Green Fund? Um, we have a number of success stories. We've actually had 
one of the first recycling um, projects or education projects um, from um, being funded by the Green Fund. And this was the Plastic Keep Initiative from the Green Light Network. And this has morphed further into a national um, waste collection initiative being done by the EMA. As we can all see, we see the IKEA bins all over. So that came, that sort of was a, it was, that came out of the Plastic Keep Initiative. We've also had the Turtle Village Trust with their um, data collection initiative on the sea turtles and so on. And we've had a lot of good results from that initiative as well. Um, a database was established. We have management plans for a lot of index beaches and so. We've had the Nature Seekers up at um, Matura, where they had a lot of uh, an initiative, a community initiative, a reforestation initiative, where they um, trained and educated members of the public on and trained them in making jewelry out of the waste material, glass and so on found on the beach. Um, We've had the UTT with the anthropogenic um, study on the western coast of Trinidad and Tobago collecting data on pollution and so. Um, and the list goes on. If you even had um, the University of the West Indies collecting data in their repo savannas, and this data will be used to develop other plans for that area and so on. And with so that list being able to go it. on, we thank you yes. so so much, Leslie and Leslie and Dylan, as well as Ronaco Osborne, for giving us just a little tips, a little tips, a little and whetting our appetite to find out a little more. And we also want to thank you for tuning into In Depth with me, DK Rasta, on behalf of the entire TTT News Crew. Thank you for joining us. The winning numbers in the National Lottery Online draws for Thursday, 9th September 2021. At 10.30 a.m., play with number 35, Big Snake. Two mega bonus balls called. Pick two, the numbers 22 and 21. In that order, 